I think I want to start a family child care program, but I'm confused, okay? And this may be a question that you're having. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you what are some of your pros and cons on having a family-based child care program. Why? Because I was a family child care provider for we expanded on being a center-based program. And so I want to tell you guys what are some pros and cons on having a business in your home. Let's get in it. because y'all know I always love to be positive you know and think in an optimistic space and so we were a family-based child care provider for about eight years right so I have lived in a child care program I am a child that was born not born but I guess I would say raised in a child care program my mom started to take care when I was about four years old and I'm now 32 and so I have seen everything that there is to have a business and a family child care program and live in the with it and one of the things you may be wondering like how is this going to affect my own family so I'm going to talk today about some of the pros and cons um, that you want to consider if you're thinking about starting a family uh, business in your home okay so one of the first things I'm going to say is the pros is that the most obvious one is that it's convenient, right? So it's super convenient to start a um, family daycare in your home. Why? Because it's easier. The licensing is much more simplified than, you know, shopping for a building, buy a building, having all those regulations. The regulations to operate a licensed home daycare program that is, is, is much easier. It's much more simplified, right? It's convenient. You don't got to drive the work. For our distance, you can literally come right downstairs, okay? So obviously the convenient is gonna be one of them. The second one I'm gonna say is that um, I think starting small, right? So if you have never had a business before, your biggest fear is can I keep up? Like, can I afford, can I keep up with my bills at home and then my bills at this building, right? So that's one of the reasons why you're like, I, I, I can't even think about you know, getting a building because I'm already, you know, basically might be living check to check and you're trying to get on your feet, but you know that you don't have the financial means and or resources to get a whole location. And so starting out small in your home as a family provider is really, really good for people that don't have a lot of capital, don't have a lot of startup. You know, maybe you've never had a business before or you don't want to invest oh so much money, but maybe you want to take, you know, 10000 7000 and transform your living room and dining room into a daycare. It's a great idea, right? So many people sometimes stumble up on being a family provider, just like my mom. So many times people ask her, like, oh, how did you um, start daycare? Like, wh how did it start? And my mom will tell you, she never was an entrepreneur prior. She worked in corporate prior to ever starting a daycare. And she only started the business because she would walk me to school. And people would ask her, like, hey, can you walk my kids to school, too? And so what you think that led to? Money and business idea. And so starting small is a really great way for, which leads me into my next thing, is less overhead. Right, so you already have to be responsible for rent, bills, utilities, insurance, all of that great good stuff in your home where you live. And so if you can designate an area, a place space, whether it's your living room, your dining room, your basement, if it's allowed, um, you know, in your area, in your state, then it's a great way for you to make money, start small, and the money that you're paying for rent. So let's just say your rent is right now, I'm gonna say your rent might be $1,800. You already gotta pay $1,800 for rent. Why not let you start a business in your home and instead of, um, you know, you paying $1,800 out of this nine to five that you're constantly in, your business while you're in the comfort of your own home will pay the $1,800 and it will be a business expense and it will be a tax write off, the same exact thing. So that'll be the first thing that I would just say is, you know, starting small. All right, guys. So another pro about starting a business and a family-based child care program is going to be building your business, right? So let's say if you were just like me or just like us in our store, you never owned the business before. Like you have no idea what it takes to manage staff, manage payroll, just manage bills and profits and loss and all the expenses that it takes. I think it's a really great space for you to really build your business. And when I say build your business, Many times businesses fail, like they will tell you, if you are not making a profit after, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me, but if you're not making a profit after year five and you're still taking five consecutive losses in your business, the IRS will consider it a hobby, 
okay? In order to have a business, it has to be profitable in some way, shape, or form, whether it's four figures, five figures, six figures, it has to be profitable in some way, shape, or form. So obviously building your business as a family provider is super important. How are you building a business? You're getting clients, right? You're building reputation. You're seeing what type of educational program you want to work with. Like I have some clients that they only love working with infants and toddlers. I talked to a provider in Texas the other day. She only loves working with infants, one-year-olds and two-year-olds. I have some providers such as myself, we only work with preschoolers, three, four, and five-year-olds, right? So getting your feet wet and really building your business allows you to see what you like and what you don't like. Wouldn't you rather know what you like and what you don't like in your home, in a small space that's intimate, is not a lot of overhead, is not going to be a crazy loss if you make a mistake or if you lose a child, you know? And obviously, when you start a program, sometimes family programs, you can have six, seven, usually up to 12 children, and sometimes 14, depending on your state. So that's why I always speak. Anytime I talk about anything, I always give the disclaimer of check your state regulations right but it's really really good for you to build your business and another great thing you can do is let's say you're in your home and you like i'm gonna designate living room dining room like we're gonna have circle time in this area this is where we're gonna play at this is where we're gonna do art at like these are your two areas where you're gonna have as your home as your home center you're building reputation you have a website you know you're professional you're building your uniforms you are getting used to hiring staff how scary is it to have to hire staff and hire six seven eight people at one time opposed to just maybe hiring one assistant and seeing oh this is how it works oh this is what payroll is like oh this is how much money i gotta have so building your business you know step by step and brick by brick so when you do jump out there and you get your building you're not brand new like yeah you're brand new to owning a building and all the responsibilities that come with being a business owner and trust me that is probably another video that i will definitely make because we do own our buildings and so that's a whole nother level of responsibility but you want to make sure you understand all that it takes without so much financial risk okay and so building your business in the space of visible parents reputation personnel which is your employees you know all the things that it takes is a great way to like build your business and then last but not least i think one of the really really great benefits of just being a family provider guys is for me it's the intimacy um and i can't stress this enough so like yes we have a center and one of the reasons why we intentionally chose to stay as a small mid-sized provider so one of our daycares is licensed for 20 children and the other one was licensed for 28 but we now just expanded it and we're licensed for 34. and so i would never want to go past 50 because i come from family i come from being a family provider and in the place of being a family provider what do you get that intimate setting that one-on-one -on -one attention it's like a family environment does that mean to say that you can't have a family environment or a family like environment or flow or style in a large center of 100 children no that's not what i'm saying so don't let me see no comments on this video about that but it is really really hard to keep up with all of the staff and all of the children and all of the things is not as personable um you know sometimes families like that you you would be so surprised like that's why i love my family childcare space that's why our new monthly membership program for the ceo club is like it's it's, it's really for family childcare providers and small to mid childcare providers because Sometimes I feel like we're in a whole different sector. And sometimes people like put down like, oh, I just own a family child care program. No, you can make money in a family child care program. You can eat in a family child care program. You can create a lifestyle. I have so many clients in our child care startup course that have had family daycares for six, seven, eight years, five years, four years. Now they're looking to get their building, but they don't want to go crazy over 40 or over 50, right? They love the fact like, okay, I might've had 12, the most I might want is 25. Um, you know, so I can really get into another income bracket. But that would just be my honest opinion when you're thinking about it. It's just, it keeps that intimacy, that personality, you know all of your families, you know, and it's really personable, especially for the younger children. All right guys, so in any space that there comes with business, there's pros and there's cons. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what some of the cons are. And uh, when you're owning a family child care provider, so some of the cons are, which is the most obvious one, guys, it's in your home, right? So you have to open your home up to strangers, right? You have to see if your, uh, your children or your husband or your spouse or your partner or whoever it is that's residing in your home, are they okay with you bringing strangers into your home? Because 
I'm telling y'all, when we started out as a family chocolate ready, first it started in the basement. Like it was just the basement that was a um, family family program. And then, of course, that grew. So then my mom changed it into a group. And when you're a group, or like they call a large group, you can have more than what family is. So it was like the in-between. You still didn't necessarily need a whole degree to operate that group program, but you needed, um, you know, more children because more children come with more money, right? So your, your six or seven kids as a family might have just been helping you break even, but group might have really been helping you bring the profit in, right? So... Um, in that space, we started out in the basement and then it expanded to the living room and the dining room. And when it expanded to the living room and the dining room, that took over the house. And then we moved out of that house. This is after that seven years, I'm telling you. We moved out of that house, my mom, my brother, um, and my dad and I, we moved out of that house and we, my mom brought a home and the whole date, the whole home turned into a daycare center. So it wasn't just, it was the basement, the living room, the dining room, and then it was the bedrooms and the bathrooms that were upstairs. And so obviously one of the kinds is, is that sometimes your home or your family can feel like that your home is taking over everything is daycare. Like you don't really have a living room and a dining room no more, right? You don't really have a, a dining room and a personal eating space or that nice dining room table because children are constantly there so those are some of you know that's a con that I, I all right so another con that i would say is um when you have the family big daycare is that it caps you off right so let's say that you start this business you're getting some enrollment people are hearing about you you're getting good reputation and now you may be at 10 12 11 kids and now you're not necessarily making a profit, but you know you're able to pay all your you're all able to pay all your household bills. So you're able to fund your lifestyle, is what they call it, right? But you're not like making enough to start saving and saving and saving because we're just totally thinking about it's a one income household, and so a family daycare sometimes it limits your cap off on your potential revenue. Um, that's what I would say, and then so many people that have family daycare as soon as like a year hit. Two years hit, they're like, tag, I want to get a building. I want to get a building. Like, I can't make no more money. I'm limited on my money. This, this, they say I can only have this amount of kids, and I got kids on the wait list, and, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to jump out there. And so that's one of the cons is that it limits you on your income, um, you know, especially if your business jumps out there, like, right out the park, and you start making money off the bed, you know, it limits you. And so that's one of the things I would say that's also a con. Um, another con I would say is family boundaries. And this is a good one, right? And I'm being so real because if y'all know me, y'all know I'm super real. I'm super transparent. Um, sometimes when you have a, fam a family program and especially like if it's in your home, there's no boundaries on, you know, when it's work and when it's family. Um, and I say that because I really, you know, value, value family time with my husband and my family, you know, and so there's no boundary sometimes when it's home, you know, and work. And sometimes your children can feel like, oh my God, it's always daycare. Like it just takes over your whole world, especially because your business is in your home, right? So having a designated space, like if your regulations allow for you to have your business in your basement, that's really, really great because it's like when I'm down there, it's business. If I hire somebody, this is the door. Like you don't go past this door. I remember even when we began to hire staff in our home and we only, it was a point in time, like I'm gonna take y'all back all the way, where we only had three bedrooms upstairs because the living room, the dining room, and the basement became daycare. So my brother and I had to share a room um, so that we could have, you know, just the, the main two bedrooms. And then we had a living room in one of the bedrooms upstairs because we had no living room space, right? Because now the living room is daycare. So, you know, sometimes it just takes over your life and it takes over your world as a family. But, you know, with anything that they're struggling, like there's anything that same business that may take over your world can fund your lifestyle and it can fund you to have a, a wonderful life. You know, so there that is the con that it will like take over, but it's just boundaries, you know, and I really believe that you just set them, you know. So if you open up your daycare at 7 30 a.m., that means you open up dressed, you know, professionally ready to. I absolutely hate this shirt, dressed professionally, you know, ready to rock and roll. That doesn't mean that you come down with your pajamas on, come down with your bonnet on. Like, no, you treat your business as a business, okay. So that's just one of the kinds that I would say is that, you know, it takes over your world and having those boundaries, you know, for your family is really, really important. So you learn how to separate it early on. 
All right, guys, so if you like this video, let me know down in the comments what are some things that you're thinking about of your starting, you know, a family um, child care program, and what do you think some of your pros and your cons are going to be, or really, like, what's your stuck space? Uh, because I believe and I know that, like, you're like, do I really want to bring this in my home? These are strangers. But you got to set up a system. So I remember having doors. I remember having, like, cutoff spaces. Like, this is the door. It was locked. You couldn't go up the steps. This was the door. It was locked. You couldn't go down there. Like, this is private, and this is business, and this is personal. You know, so... Let me know down in the comments if you guys like this video and what are some questions you have in regards to pros and cons and starting a family childcare program. And make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you want more of these videos or where they came from. Until next time.